Hey, welcome back to another episode of Sound 101 here on the Deity Microphones channel. I'm Andrew from Deity. And I'm Steve. Today we are going to answer mailbag questions that we asked them two weeks ago. So they've been answering lots of questions. Uh, we got a lot of great ones. Asking. Asking? They've been asking lots of questions. I think so, yeah. You said answering. Let's start over. Okay. So the first question is coming from Diego Escalante. Diego, you are the winner of the V-Love that we gave away the last time. So congratulations. Congrats, Diego. It's pretty good. So Diego asks, how would you mic up a piano? So I would say to narrow it down, there are three really solid techniques that would give you kind of a different take on the sound of a piano. The first one would be to get just any sort of studio large diaphragm condenser okay. and have it a few feet away from your piano. And what this is gonna afford you is also capturing the natural reverb of whatever room you're in. Like a performance hall, that kind of thing. Things are exactly. designed for music performances. Right, you'd have to watch for some ugly reflections in an untreated room but there's gonna be a natural reverb that will really add a nice sound to your piano. One microphone, large diaphragm condenser, a few feet away, pointed at your piano, hope for the best. Cool. Another technique is to use the XY technique, which we talked about previously as a stereo recording technique. So that's gonna have two microphones. So you're gonna line up the capsules so they're on a single plane. And this whole setup can just be, again, a few feet away from your piano, pointed generally at it. Keeping the capsules on the same plane is gonna remove any phasing issues that you would normally have if okay. you were using a sort of stereo pair and separating the microphones. So you don't have to worry about like the three to one roll. Right. With an XY because they're Correct. literally trying to occupy the same space. You yeah. would have to you worry about the three to one rule in the final technique I would suggest where you have two microphones and they're pointing directly at the strings. You would separate the microphones three times the distance from each other than from the source. Okay. So if I've got two microphones. Yes. Right. And I'm two inches above those piano strings. Mm -hmm. I have to be six inches apart. Correct. Okay. And that might be a little close. Maybe a better ratio would be one foot to three feet. But with an acoustic piano, there's also, a, a, like I said, there's a, so many sounds coming from this thing that they're also, if you want to play around with contact microphones, there's a lot of percussive elements with the, the fingers on the keys and then the hammers on the strings. Mm -hmm. There's so many other like organic sounds coming from a piano that you could really just have a field day with recording it. But those are three solid techniques. Sure. And with a cheap electric piano, you also have the self noise. Let's do the next question. Neo Ray asks, to do an XY recording, do we need a two channel mixer or recorder? The whole idea of this stereo recording technique, stereo is two tracks. Okay. So you have the XY left, right. If you were to be mixing those two into a mono track, you're effectively canceling out all of what you were doing you, in the you first place. You essentially just made like a really wide, wide cardioid mono microphone. Right. And a lot of the perk of doing these stereo techniques is the flexibility that you have in post and how you can manipulate them further. So you'd want to keep these tracks separate. So yes, you would need at least a two track recorder. Cool. Next one. Chris Hoffman asks, should we record in 48 kilohertz or use our recorder's highest settings, which is 96, 192? So if I'm doing dialogue on set, I'm typically actually doing 24 bit 48 because 48 is more than enough for the human voice. If I'm doing high speed or sound effects, that I know are gonna get slowed down in post, or even if I don't know if they're gonna get slowed down, but there's a possibility that they're gonna to wanna to do some time ramping with the sound effect, 96. The idea is it's more samplings that make it look more like the actual analog waveform was. So when you stretch it out, you don't get stair stepping. Sure. Which actually makes it feel even lower bit than it actually ever was recorded. That crunchy digital sound. It gives very crunchy digital. It sounds very lo-fi. But for the most part, if you're doing this dialogue, you're not time ramping dialogue. Right. So 48 is more than enough. Cool. This one comes from Benjamin Obermoser. And the question is, is the distance between the two ears in a binaural recording setup very important? Yes. If I were to put them literally right next to each other, like super close, the time between here and here is literally almost nothing. And would that lead to phasing issues? Exactly. You want to space these out actually about six inches. The reason is your head is about six inches to eight inches wide. So if I've got these out pretty far, you also may want to put some kind of blocker in the middle to act like a nose and the face. And that all adds to extra time it takes to get from one ear to the other, which helps with the stereo imaging. These ears, if you're curious, by the way, because I know the comments will ask, where do you buy just rubber ears? These are acupuncture ears. You go to eBay and type in acupuncture ears 
And that's exactly what these are. These are meant for people to do the needles and all that kind of stuff. And because of that, the material and the thickness and how sound travels through the rubber and acts in these ears, is actually very realistic to your own human ear. I would not have known that. Yeah, and they're like 20 bucks. Cool. Our last question comes from Cypher7. Can binaural recordings be used as alternative or solution for VR recording? Yes, but dot, dot, dot. This is important because uh, you have to have a special binaural microphone. It's called a quad binaural. Uh, they're crazy expensive. They're crazy specialized. But at the end of the day, let's always remember ambisonic microphones, quad binaural, all these kinds of VR type microphones that are specifically for VR are really fancy room tone microphones. At the end of the day, you're still using point sources on all your talent. You're still doing sound design in Foley. You're just now spatializing it and doing an extra step of instead of just like stereo Foley, it's not a driving factor for a lot of projects. So binaural recording by themselves, just two sets of ears for VR, no. Uh, quad binaural, yes. So cool. there's your answer. It's exciting to see all these binaural recording questions. I feel like people are really trying out some exciting new stuff with the sound. Very really cool. cool stuff. So there was another five questions in the bag. You guys now know a little bit more uh, than hopefully you did when you started this video. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget like, follow, and subscribe on all the social media platforms. If you leave a comment below, know that you are entering our contest and you could potentially win a VLOV. I'm Andrew from Deity Microphones. Your Deity Steve. Have a good day. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are deities. Accept it. Have a good day. <laughs>